ready to start? Okay. And you indicated Ms. Conwell may or may not be joining us depending on some meetings. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll, we'll proceed then. Uh, today's Cuyahoga County Public Works Procurement and Contracting Committee meeting for Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023 will be called to order. Um, roll call, mm -hmm. please. And just as a reminder to all who are in attendance, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed on the county's YouTube page. Calling the roll, Mr. Tuma. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Ms. Conwell. Ms. Conwell is absent at the moment. Mr. Sweeney. Present. Ms. Turner. Present. There is a quorum. All righty. Uh, is there any public comment this morning? No, Mr. Chair. No one is signed in. Okay. Seeing none, could I have approval of minutes from the February 1st, 2023 meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from February 1st, 2023. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And Madam Clerk, if we could have the first matter referred to committee this morning. Resolution number 2023-0033, making awards on requisition number 11147 to various contractors and a total amount not to exceed $1,500,000 for on-call heavy construction services on a task order basis for various road and bridge maintenance and repairs. Okay, and if you could just please state your name for the record. Nicole English with Public Works. Um, so this is a master contract. This is the second time we're doing this. Um, we have an alternative procurement that was approved through Board of Control. And the way it works is we put out an RFP um, for heavy uh, on-call construction services. So this is for tasks that would be emergencies, um, a washed out culvert, guardrail, things a little bit beyond what our maintenance crews could handle or it could be a larger emergency that we need done right away. And so instead of being able to put a bid out right that second um, and wait the you know 30 days or so it gets in, we can use this contract. So we put an RFP out on the street. Um, four contractors submitted. All four of them were um, proposing to enter into this master with. And the way it works is um, if the job is a non-emergency, we actually meet them on site, uh, whoever is interested of the four contractors, they submit what we call a mini bid. We score that based on cost, schedule, um, and other considerations, and then award the mini bids for each um, individual project. In an emergency case, we would call them and not necessarily have to do a full mini bid process, but whoever could get out there quickest and do, you know, if a bridge collapsed or something and we needed shoring, um, that kind of work. So um, we did three contractors last time um, we did come to board of control for the alternative procurement and councilman Miller had asked could we expand that and we said sure we went up to five and we did get four submitted so we're awarding to four so all four of these vendors will be eligible for all the tasks that we put out okay um, I see there there's some issues with the um DEI compliance. Correct. So, so why don't you explain going to Two of them that. submitted and were approved and two of them didn't. One of them just didn't put percentages in because again, they don't know what kind of work they're going to be doing. I mean, we gave a broad scope of what could be and so they didn't assign percentages because they didn't really know how. So they've all committed through the contracting process to meeting the goals once we start the project. But it, and they've identified subs that they will use that are part of the diversity program. They just couldn't commit to percentages because they didn't have actual scope to add, you know, put percentages to. So it's not, it wasn't a fixed amount. And some of these contractors, I mean, they could get no, no work out of this um, if they don't mini, choose not to mini bid or they don't win any of the mini bids. So again, it's kind of a rolling um, process and we'll just keep an eye on how they're meeting the goals as we go through. And they will be tracked in the B2G system. Okay, so they, there is a tracking device to make sure that they comply Correct. As, as they proceed forward. Um, did, did you maybe want to speak sure. to this as well, just to you know, make sure that we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing properly here? So if you could just state your name for the record. Good morning, Lenore Lockett, Department of Equity and Inclusion. Yes, there are two bidders that were ruled non-compliant. They did have on their proposals, they did list vendors that were county certified. However, the one vendor, they did not, we understand that there weren't going to be, a, we didn't know the exact percentage, but we need to know what scope of work that they're committing to sub, sub to the vendor. So they, for instance, they had, uh, let's say they listed a surveying company. We need them to say that they're going to use them for surveying because we want to first make sure that they're um, providing services in a, that's consistent with the goods and services that company normally provides. Right. And that also helps us with tracking so that if there is a scope of work with surveying authorized, mm -hmm. then we have a commitment that they were going to use this vendor. 
Okay. So there is so there's an understanding in place that they're committed to continuing to do what they need to do to make diversity goals and such. Um, uh, and any uh, well, I'll um, I'll okay. Appreciate that, uh, Ms. Lockett. Appreciate that. Um, if you want to continue, Ms. English. I'm good. If oh, any good. questions, um, have yeah. To how about uh, like what type of specialties are these vendors? So they're mostly um, general construction contractors. So the last round uh, that we did a three-year contract, we used them for items out in Olmsted Township, we, where we are responsible for. There was um, a sort of a slope failure. So we went out and shored up the slope and um, we've used them on when there's a major guardrail taken out that our crews can't just put back a, mm -hmm. a short term of guardrail. Um, you know, they're just, they're general road and bridge contractors. Okay. <clears throat> I'll open, <clears throat> excuse me. I'll open the floor to my uh, colleagues. Any questions from my colleagues? Miss English, you mentioned a tracking device or tool or mechanism what can you explain that a little bit so to me? there's a software called b2g that we use and um lenora's department and so when the contracts get uh, awarded they get submitted into this system with the goals that they need to meet and so the prime contractor has to go in and submit all their invoices through the system and then the subs actually go in and then say yes we got paid for this amount and so it tracks the percentages as you go through the project really every time they send an invoice and so we use that on all of our construction projects and i believe um diversity they use it on other projects throughout the county but specifically we do it on construction so it's really nice because we can run reports all the time on any projects or overall what we're doing and see what kind of metrics we're meeting and not meeting thank you mm -hmm. okay any ad additional questions um what t what type of time frame are we looking for on this so we show the period of 3-1. I think it was anticipating getting here a touch sooner. Um, so I guess second reading suspension would get us approved before March 1st, if okay. that could work. Okay, if nobody has any objections, I'll make a motion to move this on on second reading suspension. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to move 2023-0033 uh, on for second reading suspension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And the ayes have it. All right, thank you. And Madam Clerk, if you could uh, move on to the next piece of legislation. Resolution number 2023-0034, making awards on requisition number 11049 to various providers in the total amount not to exceed $2 million for various maintenance, repair, and operation supplies for the Sanitary Engineering Division. Okay, and if you could just please state your name for the record. Hi, good morning, Matt Ruby, Department of Public Works. So the item that was just read is a two-year master contract for our sanitary sewer division. Um, it is intended to, the, for the purchase of goods and commodities um, across eight different commodity types. Um, and these supplies are used um, as the, the foundation for all the work that the sanitary division does on behalf of our municipalities to maintain their, their sewer systems. Um, there were... As part of this master, there are eight vendors um, that we are that we are looking to um, include in the in the contract. Um, like I said, it is for a, a two year a two year period. Um, so are uh, are the uh, services uh, listed? They're not specific, uh, so. Why choose to do them in a master contract as opposed to individual services for these? Just, just asking. Sure. No, that's an excellent question. So this is the the second master that we did. The first ones we um, that were done by our department were in 2020 and just expired at the end of last year. So the utility of a master contract um, really provides us with the flexibility um, since we we budget and we anticipate the work that's going to be done. But of course, things come up, emergencies happen, different projects arise during the course of the year. So putting all these, these vendors and these supply commodities together in one contract allows us to um, shift around the money as we need to, um, of course, with the not to exceed in mind, um, to be responsive to those okay. needs. Okay. Um, what's the start and end date on this one? I don't think I've seen that. Start date is January 1st of this year. End date is December 31st of 2024. Okay. And have, has some of the work been performed already since it's been January 1st? Uh, there have been purchases done. Um, so we do have some um, pending invoices. Okay. Um, be and um, are, are, obviously, not obviously, but the, has the county been satisfied with the work that the vendors have done on these? For these? Very much so. A lot of the, I actually got a number here. Um, three of the eight vendors on this master contract are returning from the previous master. 
Um, uh, my colleague shared with me this morning that for both the sanitary and for our facilities one, which is the next item on the agenda, a lot of these vendors were, um, they, they're local to the county. They were very helpful to us during the pandemic um, and came through with supply needs when we needed them. Um, so we, as a department, work very, very diligently to make sure we have really, we have good working relationships with them. Okay. I'll open the floor to uh, uh, any questions, Mr. Miller. And I also like to acknowledge Ms. Conwell made it here. Thank you. I was upstairs. He was in meetings. We we announced that earlier. Okay. Mr. Miller. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, to the department. Uh, How many, how many vendors bid on this? Uh, eight. No, not, I apologize, nine. There we got nine responses to the master, um, eight of which the Department of Public Works moved forward with. And the one that was not approved, why was that? That was, typically it's something to do with, I apologize, give me just a moment. Um, when we do our technical review, um, for, for vendors that might be compliant with um, the basic things like uh, inspector general registration, meeting those base requirements. Um, when we look at the technical piece, if they didn't respond to questions, um, like this, this master was done through a request for qualifications, so there were very specific questions we asked them. There were a couple, uh, one vendor in this regard, a couple on the facilities, one in the next item where they did not respond sufficiently to those questions. And uh, do these vendors each provide different things? Or in some cases, do they provide the same things and when a specific need arises, would you have to have a mini bid process like you described on the previous contract? Of course. Um, so there were eight commodities included in this sanitary master. Um, there are vendors that overlap with some commodities, but, but generally speaking, if that's the case and the expense that we're looking to, to purchase exceeds $2,500, it does activate the mini, the mini bid process because we want to make sure that we are still getting the best competitive prices within the scope of the master agreement. And why is there such a large difference in, in the contract amounts one of them is 830,000 and another one is only 20,000 that is going to be based on the type of commodity that we purchase um, and the utilization of such um, so I will I will acknowledge I'm not that familiar with the sanitary division but I know they spend a lot of money on concrete um, and some of those those pieces for their projects that just cost more money um, just as, as the unit cost of their good and for the previous contract that just expired, was that also a two-year contract? It was. It was a two-year, and then it was brought before this before council and was extended for one year. And uh, and over the course of the three years, how much was the not to exceed amount, and how much of that amount was actually expended? Uh, I don't have those numbers offhand, but I can get them to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, um, Ms. Turner. Through the chair. Um, I'm sorry, Matt. Yes, Is correct. It, can, what's the spelling of your last name? H-R-U-B-E-Y. Ruby with an H. I was wondering. Um, I have a question about the one vendor that failed to answer the questions. When you, you fail to award a vendor a contract, do you give any feedback to that vendor at all? Um, I would have, no, you didn't get so it. <laughs> our purchasing team, um, works very closely with these vendors. So I believe in both the sanitary case and the facilities master coming up next. Um, we actually exceeded the typical, we typically do one pre-bid, but for these masters, because of their significance to our operations, did, um, at least two, perhaps more than that. Um, and that outreach was done to make sure that the opportunity was made, that, that the vendors were aware of the opportunity to help them work through any questions that they had, any potential technical issues that might hinder them from wanting to be to contract with us. Um, 
in that particular instance for the vendor that, that we did not move forward with, that conversation does occur when we go back. Um, because we do award letters for those that move forward, but we also do notify the, the, um, the vendors that we don't move forward with and provide that feedback as to why. Excuse me? Department are you in? Public Works. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, it, might be, it might be worth uh, having uh, Ms. Lockett come in at some point and just kind of updating us on the procurement portion of Public Works because I know, uh, I don't know if it was a couple years ago, two years ago, uh, we did some uh, tweaking with the department when Public Works and trying to bring our diversity goals and uh, into focus and um, uh, make sure that things were, were being done properly. And there's the, you know, the balance between trying to uh, get specific type of work that might be specialty work done with trying to reach our diversity goals and, and such. And some, I know some of the folks on this committee are, are new to the, the committee since that meeting we had. And it might be a good idea just to give us a refresher, maybe an update, kind of see where we're at. With some of our with some of our diversity goals and such, if you wouldn't mind doing it at some point, we could set something up. Um, I think it'd be a good idea, uh, Yvonne. So through the through the chair to uh, Matt. Um, to my understanding, I thought everything went through procurement. Uh, that would be in the procurement department, which used to be Director Lockett. So, does the specific public work stuff just go to you? Is that what you're saying? I, I apologize for, for creating that confusion. Uh, when I say purchasing, so there's the Department of Purchasing, right. but then Public Works, because of our, our size, we have an internal purchasing team. So I will, I will try to clarify. So, so when of, I say when we communicate with the vendors, that is within our department. So none of the contract for Public Works goes to the regular purchasing department. They do. They come to you. They so do. they go to both. Correct. Yes. We, so our public works purchasing team works hand in hand with the Department of Purchasing okay. um, to facilitate the okay. process. Okay. That's better. Okay. All right. Good questions. Mr. Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matt, I see you. I'm Marty. Uh, on Dale's question of the, you said some are cross-trained. They can bid on them. Are well, they going to be uh, in some not to exceed 70000 and one doesn't exceed forty five, and they both do trucking? Mm-hmm. And there's a trucking need, and the need is a hundred, and they both could do it, but one's capped at seventy. So the the this is the utility of the master contract. So while that is the initial allocation of this not to exceed amount that we're requesting approval for, if as we get further into the year, um, based on the needs of the department, we can work with the department of purchasing and shift around that money, again not to exceed, but. Um, and respond to that. So if, while there may only be 70000 allocated right now, if there is a particular project and we, we eat up that amount, we yeah. can add more. And that's, thank you for that, but I'm, I'm just trying to, and I don't mean to drive it down here. I don't want to make your life more complicated. Just, but the, the exceeds thing, because if it, if 3Z trucking can't exceed $70,000 per this piece of legislation, and WW Granger can't exceed four hundred fifty thousand dollars with this piece of legislation, and they both provide trucking services. And the so that's what I'm just trying to. It's English. To, English again. I was going to ask maybe if Jared from Law could weigh in on that because I agree. I mean, the language in the resolution makes you think that, but the nature of a master contract does let us move the money between the two on to, our end. Yeah. We don't have to come back to council. So I don't know. I mean. This is just how it's always, the resos have always been written as a not to exceed per vendor, but yet the master allows you to move the money. So yeah, on occasion, it's like how we always do it. We can improve it right. on occasion with other people's thoughts. Right. So Thank you. I don't know. I mean, or if this is still acceptable and because it says master contract that in turn, that means you can move the money. I'll defer to law. Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> This and I'm just good with it. It was just on the concept of correct because it really is not. Our idea is not. We set these numbers for each vendor to start because we have to set something to add up to the total. But like Matt said, when they do a mini bid, if it goes over, we just shift the money on our end, not to exceed the full total contract amount. But we can move them between each other. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. For here we got another one here. This is Jared Zabertowski from the Law Department. I can tell you um, 
that the law department is currently looking into this situation where we are listing not to exceed amounts for the, the, the sub awards or the actual smaller contracts. So that is something that we're looking at to, to see if we can improve that process. The way that I, I understand it has been working is that we set the master contract amount at not to exceed for, uh, in the case of the one in ending 35, it's 3 million. Um, so as long as they do not exceed the 3 yeah. million among those, um, but we are looking into that larger issue um, and that is a topic of constant conversation right now. And through the chair, I'm cool with it, how it's going, but if you're working on it, do we need to amend this one specifically for this or let it go and just hold our breath and hopefully it'll get fixed so we don't get caught in a quagmire if it ever comes up? I would say no, you don't have to amend it. This is the current practice um, and it's how we're going and, and less than until we change or we um, But isn't there a flaw in the current change. practice through the chair then? Just an interpretation? I just read it as a legislator says, 3Z Trucking Supply cannot exceed $70,000 with this contract. And I believe they do trucking. And I believe WJ, the Granger I know does trucking. And if they're both in it, I would say that would be not following the letter of the direction of the legislation if 3Z Trucking goes over $70,000. And if they see that, and so, you know, they get 100 and somebody else in the bidding world can say, wow, they exceeded it. And it could cause some confusion, unlikely, but the way I read it, it could. Uh, Ms. Callum. If it goes to, to my understanding, if it goes to the master contracts, they, they all say the same thing, and I guess law determined that. But say the, uh, the Phillips needed more than 50000 they could move, because they haven't utilized all these other contracts, they could move the money around. Now, that doesn't come back to council, that portion, but does it, so say the $50,000 contract needed more money. Wouldn't that go to board of control at that point? No. no. The, master, the master contracts allow us to move within. We just work with purchasing and OBM to move the funds within because they have separate lines. Um, as long as we don't exceed the total master agreement. And I believe this is the case for all the masters across yes, the county. HHS does them, we do them. Mm -hmm. So that way for I, I mean, I agree the confusion on the language because you think not to exceed this amount, but I mean, that is the, the and, practice and the is to move it. Through mm -hmm. the chair to the presenters in their law department, I'm just trying to tighten up any loophole for exposure from mm -hmm. other vendors that read this legislation and says, oh, look, they exceeded this. Right. And it could go to court, and I don't know which way it would come out. We yeah. are comfortable with our past practice. So again, I'll, I'll defer to law yeah, <laughs> on so. that piece. You know, it, it's a language issue on the resolution. The contract itself does say that the monies can be moved around. So the, if it went to the contract, it's just the reso that's reading right. that it's, way. So I, as for now, to the count, to Councilman Sweeney, it, it appears the law department is advised that it's okay to proceed as is with the yeah. current practice I with the understanding smaller. that they're going to look to see to, if it can be improved, we'll absolutely do so. And one small one to the law department? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how long has it been being looked at? Because it just came out of my mouth now. Was it previous administration? Was it a direction from this administration? And what would your timeline be to uh, have a direct recommendation from the law department for this particular topic? Well, thank you for the question. I do not have a timeline for you available. I can tell you that um, we have been looking at how we do master contracts for approximately the last three weeks. We've been working with procurement. Um, we've been talking to the fiscal department and we've been debating it within the law department. Um, and I think that that's where it properly remains, especially in a public meeting. Um, there are some there are some concerns that we want to keep um, amongst ourselves right now as we think through the no, process. I'm all good, and it's just another fresh eyes from the new administration coming in and doing their job, and I love it. Yeah, so. I think it came up during the briefing meeting, so that's referring to the couple weeks ago. You know, when they, these items first were coming, we started talking about it. So we're on the same wavelength with you, which is scary, but uh, sometimes uh, good. Uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> Mr. Law, Mr. Assistant Law Director, thank you. Right. I look forward to working with you. <laughs> thank you. All right. See, I, I knew I liked Nicole. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Got All right. Brand. Uh, wh uh, where, where were we? Uh, any additional questions from uh, my colleagues? Um, and with with that, um, again, if, if this was a January first 
time frame, I imagine you're looking for a second reading suspension to get these moving along. That would be fantastic, yes. Um, and if there's no objections, I'll make a motion for our 2023-0034 for second reading suspension. Do I have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for second reading suspension on 2023-0034. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the next resolution, please. Resolution number 2023-0035, making awards on requisition number 11080 to various providers in a total amount not to exceed $3 million for various maintenance, repair, and operation supplies. Thank you. And if you could just state your name for the record. Of course. Matt Ruby, Department of Public Works. Um, so this item is for our facilities division. Um, functions very much the same way as the last item, not to exceed $3 million. We have 20 vendors that we're bringing forward. Um, and of those 2014 are returning from the previous master that extended from 2020 to 2022. Um, they cross over 20 different types of commodities and again to the prior question of there are several of them that can uh, sort of overlap with the, with the commodities, but the mini bid process is in effect for anything exceeding $2,500. Um, this master contract will allow our trades um, to purchase supplies for general maintenance, for capital projects, for other special projects, et cetera, um, to be able to, to operate the facilities division. Okay, and similarly to the last contract, um, so these, these are vendors that have specific areas of expertise and we utilize them for various uh, functions. Um, how long is this contract? Two years. January, two, uh, two years, 2023, beginning. January 1st of 2023 to December 31st of 2024. Okay. I mean, I, I do have to ask, why weren't these brought earlier if they're January 1st contracts? Of course, and, uh, that's a good question. Um, so in bo both instances with the sanitary and the facilities master, um, the process was started um, mid last year, um, especially with the, the facilities one because there's 20 different vendors. Um, there is a time consideration for having to collect all the, the various documentation, the documents, excuse, excuse me, to be able to move forward and initiate the procurement process. Um, I believe I was told about 260 documents in total for this facilities master. Okay, meeting. and with that, are, is some of the work have, have begun already or is that? There, ha there have been some supply purchases, yes. Supply purchases, okay. Uh, questions from my colleagues on this one? Mr. Miller? Mr. Chairman to uh, Mr. Hoovey, uh how many vendors bid on this one? 22. And so the, the two that weren't included were similar to what you described on the last one, is that correct? Correct, yeah. And, and, and you said 14 vendors are returning from the last round. Are there vendors from the last round other vendors that did not return? There, there were a couple um, anecdotes were shared. Like, like I had previously said, we, we do the outreach and communication with these vendors. There was a couple of vendors. Um, I know one um, was facing a health crisis and, and missed the opportunity. Um, there were others that chose not to continue um, for whatever reason. Um, like I said, we did bring in a handful of new vendors as well, which is great. And you said that if, if the amount exceeds $2,500, that, that the mini bid process is in effect. Correct. If it does not exceed $2,500, do you just randomly pick one and, and work with them, or how do, you, how do you decide who gets the, the purchase order? So the, the, the directive given to um, our trades and our, our facility staff is anything above the the 2,500 has to go through the mini bid process, as I said, and that's all prescribed. And they work with our internal department purchasing team to make that happen. Up to that threshold, they are aware of which vendors are part of the masters, who are their options for, um, to go to for different supplies. So it is at their discretion to, to make those purchases. So they can choose whichever one they want. Correct. Right, okay. Okay. Uh, additional questions? Okay. Um, seeing none, um, the uh, time frame on this, again, being a January 1st time frame, um, I'll make a motion to move our 2023-0035 on for second reading suspension. Do I have a second? 
Second. Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Miller? I do have one additional question. Okay, no problem. Which is uh, whether for items under $2,500, does, does the purchase agent ever choose to use the mini bid process even though it's under $2,500? Or if it's under, do they just pick one? Um, I, I can't really speak to that. Um, I just know uh, I could get you an answer okay, on that, on, fine. on how that is typically done. I do know, just speaking anecdotally with our foreman, that many of them will search for the best deal uh -huh. um, and the best price, even though by the mini bid standard, they're not required to do so, but they will still do that due diligence. Okay, thank okay. you. Um, right now we have a, a, a second, a, a motion for a second and a um, second for second reading suspension. Uh, a yeah, a lot of seconds there. <laughs> um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay, and the ayes have it. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could, the uh, you. next resolution. Resolution number 2023-0036, making an award on requisition number 11289, <clears throat> excuse me, to Part Company in the amount not to exceed $694,755.95 for pre-phase work in connection with the replacement of Pleasant Valley Road bridges number 09.03, 09.35, over the Cuyahoga River. Nicole English with Public Works again. So this is an award of a construction contract. We have a bigger project um, for the design and the construction of the Pleasant Valley Road bridges. There's three of them in a row that will be coming later this year. Um, that's a $30 million project overall. In order for that to succeed, we needed to do this pre-phased work where we're realigning the one intersection on the eastern end of the project so that the maintenance of traffic can flow. We're installing a signal, we're doing some grading, adding um, an extra lane in the intersection. And so the, and also we included the tree clearing, which has to be done during certain time periods outside of the bat habitat season. So this project is what we're calling a pre-phase of the overall bigger bridge project. So this was bid, um, two contractors submitted bids. We are awarding to the lowest bidder. They were about 4.3% under the engineer's estimate. Um, and they are meeting all the diversity goals that were set um, through our diversity department. The, this money is all being funded with county money. The larger project has a good chunk of federal money and also we still have a federal um, grant request in for the bill program. So if that comes through, we have some uh, issue one grant money that could be transferred over to this, but at this time we don't know that there'll be extra money until we find out about that future um, federal grant. Um, so right now it is showing the legislation this is 100% county cost, but we do feel it's in the best interest. It'll get the second project done a lot quicker. Um, three bridges uh, on a major thoroughfare is not gonna be pretty during construction, so anything we could do to help um, we felt is the right thing. Okay, and is this is this the uh, first phase or second phase? Or? So this is the very first piece that we'll be doing out okay. there, yep. All right, and then um, this came in under the uh, engineer's estimate. What do you think that's for? Because these days that's rare. <laughs> I just think it's us pushing the estimates up because we are getting bids that are so high. So we were pretty conservative on the estimate mm -hmm. because we knew we have to get this work done in a timely fashion due to those restrictions on the bat. And so, um, you know, we we upped the estimate a little bit to make sure that market conditions could cover it. And you said that you, you expect this to be about a uh, six, six month project? Or? Yeah, not um, actually just about three months. It should be done by the end of May. Okay. And then that would in turn, you'll see the bridge project. It should be coming, it should be going out to bid here in the next month. So you'd be seeing the award of the bridge project coming after that. And so then the actual Will the bridge. entire road be shut down or? It's not scheduled to be. Uh, it is scheduled to be one-way detour, not during the pre-phase. The pre-phase, it shouldn't really be shut down except for inner, you know, if they have to shut a lane down right to do the construction. The bridge project shows a one-way closure. But like you know, we've been seeing when they start cutting into those bridges, we've seen some issues where safety-wise you have to shut them. Right. But the intent is not to shut the road down right okay. now. Okay. Questions from my colleagues? Uh, Mr. Miller. So how many trees have to be removed and why is that necessary? Um, I don't know the exact amount, but I could definitely get it to you from the bid. Um, the reason is it, it is being widened. 
the road is being widened to be able to include a path along the bridge. So we're putting in a, a sidewalk and a multi-purpose path along the bridge, the three bridges, and then we're grading the road in between the bridges so that the city can come through and finish the path. And then also just in general, when they have to work on the bridges, you know, they're going down into the canal and where they're at. And there's just trees that have grown over the years that in order to get the construction equipment in. So we try to then replace as many as we take out as part of the project. So that is included in the second project. And can you explain a little bit further about the relationship between the the federal money and the issue one money, you went through that fast. And Sorry. Say, say more about that. We have been awarded $9 million for the overall project in issue one. We have some federal money, but we currently have a, a grant request in for the bill program, which was part of the latest round of the transportation grants. We haven't heard back on. If we get more federal money, it will free up some of the issue one money to be used on this phase. But uh -huh. at this time, we don't have an excess of federal money on the big project. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Quickly. Sweeney? Thank you. You mentioned a sidewalk and a bike trail or a multiple purpose trail, or are they the same thing? I believe there's sidewalk on one side and a multi-purpose trail on the other side. So that's going to get a little bit wider on Correct. both ends. Correct. Yeah, so we're widening them. We figure, you know, we're, we're replacing bridges that we hope are going to last 50 to 75 years. So even we really look to, even if there's not a trail today, if there is a future need for it, let's do it now while we're fixing the bridge. So that's a, the plan. I'm 100% trail, but I also 100% separation of sidewalk and trails because yeah. sometimes you merge them together. It just causes some possible... Yeah, and we really defer to the cities on these because they're the maintaining agency once we walk away as far as for the trails and stuff. So we worked with both cities on this one. Thank you for that very direct answer <laughs> and complete. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, uh, Mr. Sweeney. Um, with that, uh, what is it, the request for the timeline here? We would like to get started as quickly as possible because we're on that deadline. The bat trees, I want to say they have to be taken down before the end of April or so. So as okay. quick as we can get this started. So second reading would be helpful. Second reading or second reading suspension? Suspension, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just, <laughs> um, okay, with that, I'll make a motion for second reading suspension on R2023-0036. A second. second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. All right, thank you. And uh, Madam Clerk, if you could read the uh, last piece of legislation here. Resolution number 2023-0037 authorizing a revenue generating agreement with the Cleveland Police Historical Society in the amount not to exceed $10 to lease 4,000 square feet of space in the City of Cleveland Police Department headquarters building. Okay, and if you could just state your name for the record. <clears throat> sure, good morning, um, committee members. John Myers with Department of Public Works. Here today seeking uh, authority to enter into an agreement with the Cleveland Police Historical Society for space they are currently using in the Cle what was the Cleveland, what is the Cleveland Police Headquarters building that the county purchased uh, several years ago. Um, this is a, a term of three years for a nominal uh, price of $10. It's approximately 4,000 square feet of space. When we took over the building, we uh, sort of evicted them from their home for our county needs for the, the building, and we moved them uh, essentially into space that was a, the lobby where the badge case uh, is uh, and continues to be today. Um, they are required to have liability insurance. Uh, we've asked them as part of this too to work with our county archives to better share um, uh, historical information and present, uh, prepare uh, potential exhibits um, for the archives as well. The uh, lease is um, cancelable by either side with with uh, 180 days notice so that we have maximum flexibility uh, going, as you all are aware of the history of the building, uh, just to provide maximum flexibility for whatever we may be doing with the, with the site. Okay. Uh, thank you. And do you have uh, any understanding as to what the, uh, where, where the permanent location is going to be for them? Do, do they have any plans? You know? uh, they are working on it as we speak and uh, they don't know themselves. They're uh, working to, determine if it's going to be part of a new police headquarters, if it's going to be at a, you know, they're looking at a bunch of different city owned sites that they might um, convert to uh, for this purpose um, that um, I, I would only be speculating on at this point. Okay. And then, so you said there's an opt out just to confirm that. Yes. Okay. 
Questions for my colleagues? Mr. Sweeney? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Myers, it's always nice to see Good you. Good morning. My pleasure. Uh, you know how sensitive a topic this is. At, and do we have any role in making sure they don't get kicked out at all, like kicked to the curb? We, we officially don't have any role other than, um, you know, this is a, the, the police society uh, is focused on the city of Cleveland Police yeah. Department, but they also incorporate other departments in, in history from Cuyahoga County uh, and beyond so that we do have a, a strong um, relationship uh, with them and we want to see them succeed. But this is what we're doing to help based yeah. upon their request right now. But beyond that, uh, well, hopefully there will be no need to to uh, have an answer on the hand on the ready for your question. Thank you. Yeah, and just through the chair, there was some consternation a little while ago. And right now, it, this seems like the, yeah, it's all, everybody's working in this, uh, in the same direction to try to incorporate this. Yes, I don't, uh, I know that's the goal. And I have not, uh, I don't want to create any. Um, uh, no, well, we're here to, we're here to assist in that. Yeah. At least I am, and I believe my colleagues would be. Great. And uh, they're very thankful for us to uh, accommodating them during this uh, transition period uh, of, as they try and plan for. A, a more a stronger and um, future at a permanent home. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just on the uh, not to exceed theme. Yes. How do we come up with ten dollars? Can we lock it in at five or something? Well, we can uh, no, renegotiate that, Mr. Chairman. To the councilman, uh, uh, contract law requires some consideration, so uh, ten dollars is as good as any. So, but not to exceed. So there's some flexibility. Right. We uh, we don't want to press them too hard not to exceed. Uh, we're, we want to limit our generosity here to uh, I look $10. forward to understanding the results of the negotiations. Thank you. Very Mr. good. Chairman. I'll report back. You can update them in their, your next newsletter. <laughs> the, the results. Uh, I'd be nice if we all had newsletters <laughs> on a regular basis, but of we'll work on that. <laughs> Mr. Miller. <laughs> uh, so uh, under this new lease, are they still operating in what you described as the lobby space? Uh, Mr. Chairman to Councilman Miller, yes. It's essentially that uh, southern uh, part of the, um, what was the lobby of the Cleveland Police um, building uh, where the badge case is. It's and does that space work acceptably well for them? Well, it works, it uh, has been working, and it, it, it doesn't work well, and that's why they're anxious to find a new home, but they needed a place to keep all their stuff and so it's not as accessible to the public the way it currently is set up um, as far as uh, having room to display all their displays that they have available. So it's not the ideal, but they're very grateful to have a place to keep their um, materials in some great history and uh, uh, in a safe and uh, appropriate manner until a long, long, more long-term solution is determined. And do you have any estimate as to uh, how long do you think it's going to take them to make a determination on their permanent location? Um, I, I don't, Councilman Miller. I, you know, been in discussions with them. I know they're actively working on it, and then it's only till just been recently that the city finally made a decision as to their police headquarters building. Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't strike me as a large building, so I... You know, I don't know that there's going to be room for them in the headquarters building, but they have other options within city-held property that uh, um, you can imagine some of the options that they're looking at. Uh, Do you think a decision is likely sometime within the three-year time frame of this agreement? <clears throat> I do. I believe that they'll, they, they hope to have this resolved. The question that goes to your colleague's uh, question, too, is, you know, how um, how many can they get, what type of support can they get from the city to uh, to do this? They're uh, a charitable uh, nonprofit organization that, uh, you know, is, is relying uh, on their own donations and um, working with the city and the county and others uh, similarly situated to, to preserve this history and in advance that mission. What tiny one? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you mentioned city buildings they're looking for. Nothing precludes it from a county building Not or at all. any other building. 
And I just like to leave that open as all possibilities to find a place that could not only show off the preserved or the history, but also the foot the foot traffic and the ability to draw in people. So that's a long way of saying our county buildings in play as they talk about the future home of this place, not as a freebie, but just as a discussion yes. point as a they're not the county buildings are not off the table. Uh, no, not at all. We're we're happy Thank to. I, I think the natural first look was to the city, and if not, we're we're uh, just as we've stepped in, and um, the administration's been uh, helpful to them and wants to continue to be helpful to them. So that could evolve that direction, and with your um, your input and authority, uh, it could end up being that direction. But it's not a plan at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other, uh, Ms. Conwell? Yeah, through the chair to uh, John. So I'm reading this correctly. It would be just $10 le lease Correct. to this organization. Now, uh, I don't know if you have knowledge of this. Uh, are, we, are we almost done with the uh, space evaluation report from Public Works? Um, we're and to my colleagues, it was charged for <clears throat> us to determine uh, where is space available in our buildings uh, across the county. We're, we we sort of, um, um, Mr. Chairman to Councilman Conwell, we're, we're in process still. We're taking some early data to look at different options we have with different departments. Some departments have more potential flexibility for consolidation and, um, and opportunities to provide uh, better service in, in, in different ways. So um, that's information that we're trying to assemble with the new administration so that they can have it on their uh, uh, plan and, and their focus um, in this year. So that through the chair, so the Cleveland Police Historical Society uh, adds some benefit um, to the county in, order, in terms of uh, getting a, a cheap lease agreement. The, um, we're trying to accommodate this nonprofit organization, which does uh, honor and look at uh, some of the history uh, of our county. And uh, this was space that um, <clears throat> I had shared. We, we essentially evicted them out of their space when we bought the building. This was space that, didn't, that, that they're currently using in the lobby that didn't fit any of our immediate needs or our current needs. And um, so it was a way of trying to uh, help them out uh, in this time frame uh, while, they, while they're figuring out a permanent home. And do you, do you have uh, any more space in that building? N functionally uh, n uh, not usable, uh, too much usable space without some significant investment. And, and when was this, did they ask you guys uh, for this space and when, when did that occur? At the time of the purchase of the building, which has now been uh, approximately, uh, my memory said, uh, let's say f uh, four, uh, uh, four or five years ago when we purchased it from the city as uh, part of um, when they had a uh, plan for a new headquarters. So it's sort of something that evolved and uh, we were able to accommodate them r right then and, and continue to be able to accommodate them based upon our needs. And that's why we have the right to terminate this contract with, uh, with notice. So uh, even though we want to be helpful with this organization, we have to take the county's needs, immediate needs first and priority. So that's why we built in that uh, particular clause so that we can um, be free to, to take care of county needs first. Okay, so uh, offline we could, we could we could talk about this. And the only reason I'm bringing it up, colleagues, is because uh, for Health and Human Services, we've uh, initially had CASA, that is the volunteer advocates for the children that are in our care, and they go to court and they're volunteering. They were initially in the uh, juvenile detention center, and they said they needed their space, so they pushed this uh, nonprofit out, and now they're paying rent. Um, at Fairhill, and so I had <clears throat> brought this up to David, you know, maybe a, a year ago, in regards to us finding them space. Thus, why a space uh, space uh, 
report is being uh, determined to find out where space is in the county for when we have partners that are directly related to county sources can be in this building. So, you know, I don't have to know anything. God always brings it to me on one of my committees that something is. Uh, so I want to talk to you about. <clears throat> I'm happy to discuss that further. I only recently uh, just became aware of the cost issue, frankly. And Mr. Chairman at Council Conwell, the um, that I believe was in the juvenile court building, if I'm right, not. Right. So, just to clarify for your the right. public and the colleagues, it's two separate buildings. Yes. Uh, so space within those footprints is each building has its own demands and pressures uh, to be to be. But they're still with. not using. It, so we're not going to give them an excuse for <clears> the past. <throat> they're still not using that space that they claim they were going to use. So. I'm I unaware, am but I'm happy to make to, everybody happy and make sure yeah. that we we help a partner. And Public out. Works is we're here to uh, try and make space work for uh, all of our county agencies as well as our partner agencies, and so we're, we we spend no shortage of time working uh, through that and looking for opportunities. So I'm happy to continue to that you, with these folks. Thank you, because Casa has stood before my committee and stated that you know they need some kind of help, and so if we. If we can help them, sure. you know, then then we should. We we initially did. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate that, Councilwoman. And uh, maybe um, a representative of Public Works can come before your committee, and maybe they have some useful information after doing some research based on our uh, prior report. Uh, any other questions or comments? Okay. I uh, appreciate the um, information, Mr. Myers, on this and. Um, I see the, the start date on this was January 1st as well. Yes, I uh, leave it to your your wisdom and discretion as to whether, I, I just to clarify this uh, time, timeliness issue, we did go to uh, Board of Control first and until it was suggested to us that we, uh, given the the not uh, market, less than market value that we needed council authority. So. Right. That unexpectedly took additional time. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd like to just move it, move it along since this has been an ongoing issue. I know they've had issues with this, and so let's just move this forward if we could. Um, so I'll make a, a motion for a second reading suspension on this. Sure. We'll add Mr. Sweeney's name to this as well. I'll, I'll second, and I would also like my name added. Okay, and we have a, sec a second from uh, Mr. Miller, and he'd like to add his name to this legislation as well. Uh, all in favor of moving this R2023-0037 uh, on for second reading suspension, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Meyer. Thank you for your time. Uh, is any miscellaneous business before the committee this morning? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to thank everybody for their uh, good questions today. We had some very thorough and in-depth questions. and appreciate that. So I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. And uh, public works shall adjourn at 10.56 a.m. Thank you.